Hello. Hello, sir. Hello. Okay, uh, right. So today, uh, today I have a few questions on optics. So this is uh, the new the new assignment. So who has already seen the new assignment, which was published today? It's a continuation of the first optics assignment. Ah, brilliant. And uh, yeah, so today we're going to talk about, about uh, uh, mi spherical mirrors and, and lenses. Okay, so let's have a look. So I'm gonna share my screen. Oh, hello. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, okay. And ah, yes, of course. Apologies. It's being awkward. Yes, here it is. Physics, optics two, the tenth as tenth assignment. Tenth assignment. Okay. So let's have a look. Let's have a look. Uh, so the first question is on lenses. And there are a few things about lenses that you need to know. And the, uh, this, this is a construction problem. And here it is. Okay. A ray traveling uh, parallel to the principal axis will pass through the focal point. All right, and E for a diverging lens that works as well. So you can see that the ray of light traveling parallel to the axis will go through the focal point. And if it's a diverging lens, it's traveling parallel and then going out of the lens, but still the line passes through the focal point. So that's important. The second, a ray traveling uh, through the focal point will come out parallel. So that's the, just the reverse of the first, first one. In geometrical, op geometrical optics always works both ways. So if you, if you replace the image and the source, they, um, it still works. 
any uh, ray traveling. So well, sometimes you don't have an image. Mm, so it's a it's a bad way of saying it. Yes, but all rays can be reversed. Yes, in in optical in optical in geometric geometrical optics. So if a if a ray goes through the focal point, it comes out parallel to the axis. And if it's traveling towards the focal point in a diverging lens, it comes out parallel to the axis. A ray traveling through the center of a lens will not be refracted. Yeah, so we just go straight. And a parallel beam of rays will converge at the focal plane. So any parallel beam of light will converge in the focal plane. And that's important. That's important to understand. So parallel beam, it doesn't have to be parallel. So if it is parallel, of course, it will go through the focal point. If it's not parallel, it will still converge at the focal plane. And for a diverging lens, it's the same thing. We have, the, this is the focal plane and parallel beam of li lines will diverge, but they will intersect at the focal plane. Any questions, anything, anything you're unsure of, I'm happy to, exp to explain. How come a ray can change direction when it is parallel to the X axis? Well, it's not the x-axis, it's the optical axis. So a lens works in the following way. A lens looks like this. And let's say there are several rays of light traveling. The lens will bend the light rays. Well, let's be a bit more dramatic here. There's a refraction on each side because there is glass. So there's a refraction on this end and then a refraction again. Here, the refraction is not as harsh. So again, um, so there are two refractions actually at a lens, but uh, some we just, yeah. And so the reason why light can be refracted by a lens because this surface is not 90 degrees to the ray. There's an angle here. There's an angle of incidence here. So that's why it bends the light ray. Does that answer your question, Oscar? This, yes, the surface of the glass is not perpendicular to the ray because, the, the, because it's curved. Uh, and you can easily see that here. Fet, light. Actually, there's another useful thing that lenses, geometric optics. So here you go. So if you have, this is the closest thing they have to a lens, to a converging lens. And this is the closest thing they have to a diverging lens. And we can shine a light through. So you can see that a parallel beam of light will converge. We can change the direction slightly. You can see that they still converge. Now for a diverging lens, you can see that the light rays expand outwards and they, uh, they but they would converge somewhere here. The geometric optics bit, let me just load this. Oh, they've made a,
HDMI 5 version of it, which is brilliant. Uh, lenses. So here, here we are. So we have an object. And uh, we have in the image of that object. Okay. So that's pretty neat. Pretty neat. Okay. Uh, right. So let's have a look at this. Find the original path of the ray AB before being refracted by the lens. Another path KLM is given on the diagram. Okay. Well, Let's use the rules that we have here. Well, the easiest would be applied is the third rule is that a, uh, a ray going straight through, parallel to this one, why not? We draw a ray parallel to this and it goes unrefracted, it goes through the center of the lens unrefracted. Okay. We also know that light rays, parallel, B, uh, parallel right rays, converge at the focal point. So you have these are two parallel rays of light, and they will converge at the focal plane. So what we do is we continue LM like this, and now we ex expand it to the left. And here we have where the rays converge. And if we draw if we draw the plane, this is the focal point. This is the focal point of the, of the lens. So the lens has two focal points, so we can draw the on the opposite side at the same distance. Of course, you would use a, you would use your tractor, no, you would use your compass to, to draw that. And then this light ray is coming out uh, parallel and we know that a light ray going through the focal point going towards the focal point comes out parallel so we can draw a beam that goes like this Focal point. I mean, the focal point that needs to be fairly accurate. So we can draw, yes, we can draw like this. Therefore, this is your original ray. This is the ray that you were looking for. Hope that makes sense. Does it? Uh, do how well do you understand what I have done? The ray AB comes out parallel to the optical axis. Therefore, initially it was traveling towards uh, towards the focal point. Actually, oh sorry, nobody told us that AB is parallel. No, we don't know that. Sorry. We have to think of another way. Uh, yeah, so we found the focal point.
Just a second. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to assume that it is parallel. Sorry, no, no. That 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 was it. Uh, that's the that's that's the method. And so, where is my chat? Here it is. Okay, good. And we found the the focal point. And here it is. So we can draw. So this ray goes towards the focal point, F2. This is F1, this is F2, and comes out parallel. So AB is, is parallel. OK. AB is the object, and A1, A1B1 is the image. By adding construction lines, determine the position of the focal in focal point of the curved mirror. Is it a convex or concave uh, mirror? Can you just explain what is meant by focal point? Yes, sure. Okay, maybe maybe we should we should talk about some basics. Okay, so uh, uh, we have a lens. Um, we have a lens. A lens bend our lens bends light, and the center line is called the optical axis. Optical axis, sometimes called main optical axis, uh, because they could be more than one. Uh, there could be an axis going like this, for example. But uh, yeah, I mean, if if the end, it's if it's not specified that it's. No, the major optical axis, you can assume that it is. It's this one. Now, a focal, if if you if you shoot a parallel beam of light towards a lens, the these well, uh, the they they will meet at the focal point. They would be refracted. We have a point called focal point. This is a converging lens. This is the focal point. Point. And this is the focal plane because it's a plane. Yeah, focal plane. Focal plane. What? Plane. Focal plane. Uh, for a diverging lens, a diverging lens looks like this. The rays of light come parallel beam of light. It comes out. Like this. And if we continue those lines. Well, I assume. continue those lines uh, if you continue the outgoing rays if you continue them to the left they should meet at the focal point focal point and uh, you have two focal points one is here and one is symmetrical we call it usually call it f1 f2 F2. All right. One. So a focal point is a point where a parallel beam of light will 
we'll uh, go through. And for the for a, for a, for a mirror, it's the same thing. So for a mirror, curved mirror. Which is a mirror. And you have light bouncing off the mirror at any point. There is angle of incidence and angle of reflection. And the light reflects through a point known as the focal point. This is the focal point. So light rays, they travel like this. And then they converge at the focal point. Focal point. That is a So this is a concave mirror. I always get them wrong, concave mirror. Concave mirror. And the, the other one is a convex mirror. So I just copy this. If you have a con, uh, this so light bounces off the mirror. So you see those on roads, you know, on on tight corners. They're used for safety. So with a wide angle viewing, and light bounces off. And if you can continue those lines, they should meet the same point on the focal point. Point. Okay. This so uh, this is a con, con convex mirror. This is a convex mirror. Mirror. A convex mirror is the type of mirror that you see on well, roads. So convex mirror. Convex mirror. Ah, like this. That's an ex that's one expensive mirror. <laughs> Yeah, so here it is. Anyways, moving on. Uh, for mirrors, uh, yes, yeah, so AB is the object, A, A1, B1 is the image. By adding construction lines, determine the position and the focal point of the curved mirror. Is it a convex or concave mirror? Okay, so we have a mirror somewhere, and we have an object. Uh, well, we know that the mirror reflects, mirror reflects. So let's say 
the mirror is somewhere here. We don't know if it's a convex or a concave mirror, but what we do know is that a ray originating from B will reflect from the mirror and travel directly back to B1. So we definitely know that here, there's, there's, a, there's a mirror here. The second thing we know that if, we, if a ray is traveling from A to this point, it will reflect with the same angle. So this angle theta, and this is also theta. So basically what we need to do is to work out where this point is, given that this, these two angles are the same. So theta one and theta two. So theta one must equal to theta two, right? Okay. A second. <laughs> right. The second thing that we need to know is that uh, Now uh, we need to we need to understand whether uh, whether the mirror is a convex or concave. So we, I, I've drawn this just randomly. So could it be like this? So what that uh, what does it mean that a one b one is the image of a b? It means that any ray originating from a will bounce off the mirror and pass through A1. So basically what that means that a ray traveling from So there's there's a mirror somewhere here. We don't know whether it's curved in, curved out or perhaps it's a it's a plane mirror. Why not? Well, we definitely know that any any a poor, uh, any ray goes originating from A will have to go through A1. So let's say, let's pass a ray like this. A ray like this will bounce off into A1. So it has to be a concave mirror has to be a concave mirror like this. Does that make sense? Sorry, I'm, 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 I might be, I'm, I, I feel that I'm being a bit vague. Does it make sense what I'm talking about? I don't get it. That's fine, that's fine, okay. Right, let's, let's start from the top. So when we say that A1B1 is an image of AB, that means rays of light traveling from A, originating from A, they bounce off a mirror. We don't know where the mirror is and they go through A1. Well, they don't. The, you know, only the ones that can reach the mirror, of course. Right? We're not talking about rays that are going this way. They can't bounce off the mirror because there's no mirror. 
so it doesn't return to B. But any 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 light from A bouncing from the mirror will pass through A1. So if there is another ray like this, it has to bounce like this. If there's another ray, it has to bounce like this. So you kind of you can kind of see where I'm going with this. Now, if the mirror was flat, this couldn't happen because a ray going like this will bounce away. So the mirror has to be curved like this. And if you if you have a yeah, well, that's pretty much it. It's a on cave mirror. Right. Does that make sense? Does this bit make sense so far? Okay. So when we understand that it has to be a concave mirror, and that's that's a big thing. Like I mean, uh, it's a. So let's let's put it somewhere here. We don't know where it is, but we do know. that a ray traveling from B has to go through B1. And the only way that this is possible is that the mirror is vertical right here. It go, goes from here and it has to bounce back exactly into B1. So going like this and then going like this it has to bounce here. Therefore, the mirror is flat here. So this is the optical axis of the mirror. Uh, then we can draw some rays from A. So the first one, because the mirror is flat, the mirror is vertical at this point, the ray traveling from A and bouncing off the mirror has to go through A. Oh, well, it has to go, it has to go through the, uh, it has to be symmetrical, okay? So basically what we have here is that if we draw, if we draw, if we flip AB upside down like this, it has to go through this point. So this obviously doesn't. So we need to move the mirror closer. As a matter of fact, well, we don't need to, like, we just draw, we just draw this. Because now, if this is equal to this, now this will bounce off. So the mirror is here. Okay, so that's the, that's the position of the mirror. And now we need the focal point of the mirror. Find the focal point of the mirror. We draw a parallel beam of light from A, passing through, through A. Uh, let's call it yellow, parallel beam. The neutral bounce back through A1. So this is the focal point, the mirror. Maybe this diagram helps. Oh, I think it's in the in the assignment. So uh, from a from an object, the first ray goes parallel and go then goes through the focal point. You see that ray. This is the ray that we are that we're drawing. This is how we find F. Oh.
So we found F. What else do we need? What is it convex or a concave mirror? So it's a concave mirror and it's a, uh, and the focal point is here by construction. Right. Does this make sense? On a scale of one to 10, please. No, from A from A to A1, you have any ray. So Oscar, any ray starting from A will go through A. So if you draw a ray like this, like this, it will pass through A1. If you draw a ray like this, it will pass through A1. And if you draw a ray like this, it will pass through A1. Like this. No, that's for any any mirrors, like any, yeah, like if you are standing in front of a mirror and this is you and this is the tip of your head, this is A, well, let's find where your image is. Well, your image, is the same distance is the same distance from the mirror as you are. So your image is here. A1. A1 is your image. And now we draw rays of light. So if a ray of light is going like this, it will bounce like this. So it's coming from A1. If you have another ray, like this, for example, it will bounce like this. It is coming from A1. So for any mirror, the rays coming from A1 will go through, rays coming from A will go through A1. They don't necessarily intersect, but they uh, their mathematical extensions will ex intersect. Does that make more sense? Okay. AB is the object. A1B1 is the image. By adding construction lines, determine the position of the focal point of the curved mirror. Is it a convex or concave mirror? All right, well, first of all, uh, there's a mirror. We don't know where it is. We don't know if it's a convex or concave. We just imagine, imagine a mirror somewhere here. Or the mirror could be here. We, we don't really know where the mirror is. What we do know is that uh, the ray coming from A will pass through A1. So that means that the, the mirror is somewhere somewhere here, like, well, let's, let's say we can imagine it somewhere. Now we draw a ray of light passing from B, passing from B and we know
Okay. So we know that the the we know we know that the mirror is somewhere here. So it could be like this, it could be like this, but uh, yeah, it's somewhere. What we do know is because the ray A, we know we know that this is the optical axis of the mirror because the ray uh, passing starting from A will go through A1. So the mirror can only be like this. So it can't be like, I don't know, like this, for example. Yeah, because the, the ray would bounce up. So it has to be like this. That means that if you flip B, if you flip B upside down, let's call it B2, the ray starting from B will end up in B2. So, this, and then travel like this. So the mirror must be, the mirror must be here. That's how we find the position of the mirror. Sorry, not the... Sorry, I've, I've done something wrong. Apologies. Okay. The ray will have to go through. The, the ray originating from B will pass through B2. Yes, that is a fact. But there are different ways of how this can happen. It can happen like this, for example. It can happen to, we don't know. We don't know the position of the mirror yet, sorry. Yeah, so we don't know the position of the mirror. Uh, what do we know? Uh, we know that the ray that starts from B has to go through both. Sorry, let's go back. All right. So, yes. Let's look at the at the at the rays. All right. Yes, I got it. Let's look at the rays. So the first ray for a mirror is the parallel one, and it bounces through the focal point. The second ray is the one that goes through the focal point and comes out parallel. Comes out parallel to the axis. The third ray goes through the center of the curvature. So the center of the, it's, it's, the, it's a spherical mirror and the sphere has a center and the C is the center of the sphere. And the ray passes through the center of the sphere. It hits the mirror normally, 
and reflects to the same point. You can see because if you start from the center of the sphere, obviously you hit the, the sphere at 90 degrees and you bounce back at 90 degrees, or not 90, zero degrees, technically. And the fourth ray is the ray that hits the mirror here. And because the, the mirror is, is perpendicular to the plane, it bounces off at the same angle. So we're going to use these four rays. So the first ray that we need is the ray starting from B and going through B1. So it's going, it's hitting the mirror and bouncing back through B1. So this is perpendicular to the mirror. So this already sort of tells us that the mirror has to be like this. The mirror has to be uh, convex. Okay. Are there any questions? No questions so far. <laughs> right. The first ray. The second ray is that we know that when it bounces off the mirror, it, when it bounces off the mirror, it has to bounce through the opposite here. Okay. Finally, right. yes, and the ray that passes through B2, which is this point, has to go through B1 as well. So there's a ray going like this. But the ray, because it's so it's starting from B, and it has to go through B2, that tells us the position of the mirror. The mirror is here. And as you will see that how this makes sense. So the ray goes like this, bounces off like this, and it seems that it is coming from B1. Is coming from B1. And it is a con convex mirror like this. And now we can find the focal point. We know that a ray of light will, a parallel beam of light. lights will come as if from B. That's a parallel beam of light, parallel ray of light, sorry, parallel ray of light. No, parallel. A ray parallel to the optical axis uh, coming from B. And here is the focal point. Here's the focal point. And here, if you, carry, if you continue this line, you get the center of the curvature of the mirror. The center of the curvature of the mirror. All right. Is that making sense? Hopefully. Okay, so problem, problem, oh, you know what? 
I want to go through these uh, here because I have this geometric optics. I can use the mirror. So where was that? Where was the object? The object was AB and the focal point was here. The object was somewhere here. Here it is. The rays come like this. Principle. Make the pencil smaller. So it's just too big. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, so there's a there's a pencil. The the parallel ray, the ray that goes parallel to the optical axis, bounces off the mirror. Well, it's not really showing that it's bouncing off the mirror, but just believe me that it is bouncing off the mirror, going through the focal point and going through the pencil. Now the ray of light passing through this bit bounces off at the same angle and the ray going through the center of the curvature of the mirror but, uh, but, oh no so it goes through the focal point and bounces off parallel so the center of the curvature is not is not shown okay it's a spherical mirror it's a piece of a sphere. Problem one. F multiplied by alpha, yes. F multiplied by alpha. F, F alpha. Now the second scenario, so you can see you can see that it matches up. The second scenario we have a con cave mirror and the the object was closer than the focal point, and here it is. So you can see that uh, the ray going towards the mirror bounces off like this. Mm -hmm. So here it is. So this is the object number one. This is the first object. This is the arrow. And this is the second object. So the ray going like this and like this. Like this the ray going like this and like this. Well, the, the, and like this and like this. Okay. Hopefully you can see that. Right. Okay. And uh, the first one. Okay, so that's the, that's the second one, sorry. That's the second one. And the first one was like this like this. Oh, 
Okay. Right. So uh, the remaining questions would, some of them would be easier. <laughs> okay. So you just, uh, you can breathe out. The next question is about a plane mirror. So that's much easier. What is the minimal height of a plane mirror hung on the wall such that a person can see themselves in full height? Have you ever thought of like, how tall must the mirror be in order for you to see yourself full height? Can you see yourself in full height in any mirror? What do you think? Isn't it just a matter of moving further away from the mirror? Do an experiment. Find a mirror. Wow, the, easy, the closest mirror to you is probably your phone. You can see quite a good reflection in your phone. Move away from your phone and see if you can see more of yourself in the reflection. What do you notice? doesn't change yeah no matter how far you move away from the mirror you can still see the same amount of you so i can i can see i can see my head and my neck so i can see this bit i can see from my chest to my head you can probably work out the size of my phone by like this Okay, so as I move away, I can still see exactly the same, the same. So what's going on? Well, isn't that counterintuitive? Like, okay, type, 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 type um, expected, if that's what you expected, or unexpected, if that's what something you didn't expect. That as you move away from a mirror, you don't see more of yourself. Yeah. See, it's quite surprising if you think, if you think about it. It's exactly. but um it's explainable. You can take a mirror. So this is a mirror. And uh, this is you. This is you. Standing, standing in front of a mirror. And we know that your image is the same distance from the mirror. But mirrored, of course, on the other side. Now, you want to see yourself through the mirror. And you see with your eyes. Your eyes are up here. So the ray of light traveling from your, from your toes from your toes must hit the mirror and bounce into your eyes and the same must happen from your head your head must hit 
and bounce into your eyes. So definitely your the mirror has to be this into your eyes. So the mirror must be between this and this point. This is the minimum size of the mirror because then uh, I'll show it again. The light coming from the top of your head will hit the mirror and bounce into your eyes. And the light from your feet will bounce the bottom part of the mirror and bounce into your eyes. Basically what's going on is you are, the image of the top of your head is here. So this, if you continue this line, it must go like this. And if you continue this line, it must go like this. So this is, Okay, so this is your mirror. And you see the light traveling like this and into your eyes as if it's coming from your feet. So that's your image. So you, you, you can think of the mirror as a window. And you're looking through that window and you're trying to see your image and your image is behind the wall. This is your image, which is behind the wall. And you're trying to look through a small mirror and because the distance is the same and because if, because this, if this is X, this is X, this is two X. If this is H and similarity of triangles, well, if your height is H, this would be H over two. I hope, I hope I hope that makes sense. Does that make sense? So the minimum height of the mirror is half of your height in order for you to see yourself fully. Yep, do you understand? So whenever you see yourself in a mirror, it's the same as if there was another exact copy of you standing behind the mirror. And uh, in order to see them, you would need uh, a mirror half the size of, uh, of you. Okay. Now, for lenses, for lenses, there are a few things that you need to know. And um, you have, oh, is that the lens? Oh, spherical mirror, sorry. Spherical mirror. So if you have a spherical mirror, And you have, oh, sorry, so not lenses, we're talking mirrors, we're still talking mirrors. So this is the optical axis. So if you have an object, let's say here, you have an object, in your case, in this case, is the object is you, object, and this is the image. This is the object and the image, let's say somewhere here. This is the image. And this is the focal point. Focal point. The distance from you, from all the object to the mirror is called the, uh, is, is called, let's call it D. O, distance to the object. This is the distance to the image. 
And this is the focal distance. Focal distance F. And for a spherical mirror, Right. The formula for a spherical mirror formula. For spherical mirror. Spherical mirror. All right. So one over d o plus one over d i equals one over f. And if uh, if if the mirror if the mirror is con <laughs> the mirror is concave f is uh, f is greater than zero concave f is greater than zero and convex for a convex mirror, f is less than zero. Okay. It's difficult to remember because convex is um, a convex lens produces a real image, whereas a convex mirror produces an imaginary image and uh, and vice versa. So that's why it's uh, it's confusing. I keep I I can never remember which one is which. So don't worry if you don't, but uh, it's not the end of the world. Um okay, so distance to the object. Okay, so let's have a look. S1 is the real image of the point source of light S. So S is a source of light. And the mirror is placed at O. Oh, o is the center of the sphere of the mirror. So we don't know where the, fo where the focal point is. What is the focal distance of the mirror? For what values of L does the problem has a, have a solution? Okay, so this is, this, this is the center of the sphere of, a, of, the, of the mirror. So let's say it's somewhere here. That means this distance is the radius of the of the sphere. And you will learn from the assignment that the focal distance is half the radius. So this is the radius. The focal point is somewhere here. The focal point. Uh, yes. So this R is equal to 2F. Okay. That means that the distance from the object to the mirror is L plus 2F. The distance from the image to the mirror is, somebody help me. Distance from the image to the mirror. Let's see how you understand. Image as S1. No. The distance, basically what I'm asking, 
find this distance. F minus L. F minus L. No, it has to be in terms of F, small L, and large L. Well, I mean, this is R mark. This is 2F. L plus 2F minus L. Very good. Yes, that is small L plus 2F. I hope that's what you, that's what you meant. Minus capital L. Yes. Well done. Thank you. And uh, the focal distance is F. Well, this is F. All right, so we use the formula. So one over D zero, L plus two F plus one over L plus two F minus L equals one over F. And then we just solve it. <laughs> Easy, right? So, what are we looking for? We're looking for F. Um, L plus two F, L plus two F minus L over one over F. Yeah, this it's unescapable. You just you just do it. So you multiply the first one by, uh, so it's going to be F multiplied by L plus 2F minus L, oh, close bracket, plus F L plus 2F equals, uh, open bracket, L plus 2F close bracket, open bracket, L plus 2F minus L capital. I've I removed the, the denominators, yes? So what I've done is I multiplied this by F and by L plus 2F minus L. L plus 2F minus L. I multiplied this by F, L plus 2F, and I multiplied this by yeah, so I hope you understand that how I found the common denominator. Uh, yes, and um, L plus two F, L plus two F minus L capital. And then I just expand, which is FL plus two, squared minus FL plus FL plus two squared equals L squared plus two LF minus LL plus 2FL plus 4F squared um, minus 2FL. And something cancel, so 2F squared and 4F squared cancel, L squared. Oh, we got something. Um, FL, FL cancels, 2FL minus FL. Um, yeah. 
Okay, so what you're left with is FL, FL. FL minus two F L equals L squared uh, minus L L. All right, so F of bracket L minus two F O two L equals L open bracket L minus L close bracket and finally we can find F is equal to L open bracket L minus L close bracket fraction over L minus two L. Good. We have this. Oh, uh, and of course we, in order in order for, in order in order for uh, this to make sense, f has to be a positive number. F has to be a positive number because why? Because it is a It's a real image, yes. So the fact that it is a real image means that the mirror cannot be uh, the the mirror cannot be here, for example, because then the the image would not be real. So the um, the mirror has to be behind S one. Okay. So in other words, F. So the focal the focal distance has to be a positive number. Uh, because the uh, so and the 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 mirror has to be a, uh, the the mirror has to be sorry has to be a real image because a con a convex mirror will always give you an in uh, a virtual image so only concave mirrors can produce a real image so f is greater than zero. Uh, so that means um, well, because we know that L capital is greater. Oh, where did I go wrong? Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to flip this. So I said F is L, open bracket, L minus L divided by. 2L minus L. And we can say that, well, we know that L capital is bigger than L small because that's given. So the, so the, the uh, top of the fraction is positive. That means 2L minus L. 2L minus L has to be greater than zero. So L has to be greater than small L and less than 2L. Right. We are slowly running out of time. Okay, next question. To create a directed beam of light, a projector uses a concave mirror of diameter 20 centimeters with a focal distance of one meter. At what distance A from the mirror, a point source of light should be placed in order to display a bright spot of diameter 40 centimeters on the wall that is 12 meters away from the mirror?
sorry, this is uh, this might be. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just explain the the gist. I won't go through the maths. Okay. So what we're talking about? We're talking about this, and we're talking about this. So old headlamp, old headlamps used to used to have this. So this is a real car. And as you can see, there's a candle surrounded by a spherical mirror. Well, spheric, uh, pieces of mirror placed uh, spherically. And what it does is that when you have a source of light, so a source of light S, and you have a spherical mirror, the light will bounce off the mirror bounce off the mirror and travel straight so you can have a beam of light that goes straight forward okay. now in your case, in this case, it says you have a, a concave mirror of diameter 20 centimeters, 20 centimeters, so that you have a mirror of 20 centimeters with a focal distance of one meter. At what distance from the mirror might the point source of light? So if you place it as the focal point, uh, you will see that it will, If you place it at the focal point, the light will come out parallel. And if this is 20 centimeters, 20 centimeters, the bright spot will also be 20 centimeters, 20 centimeters. So you need the rays to diverge. In order to do that, the, the source must be moved further away. So let's have a look. You don't need the image. How do I move? Right. So you place uh, you place a your source of light. So the red point is the source of light. It bounces off the mirror and it diverges. So it's a bit. Um, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good here. And nine. I can't move it. Well, anyways. Therefore. You have to place an object which is further out. You place your source of light here. And oh, sorry, no. You, what am I saying? You place the source of light here. No, you place a, the source of light closer to the closer to the focal, closer to the mirror. And then you have a diverging beam. You'll have a, a beam that is diverging. And you can work out using, using uh, geometry, you can work out the wh where, where to place it, basically. So you would have a source of light here, and the rays would go bam. And like this, bam, and like this. And when you place a screen, 
place a screen here. The diameter of the spot on the screen, the bright spot on the screen is 40 centimeters. 40 centimeters diameter. Yeah. So this is this is the this is how, uh, what you need to do here. Now this is just geometry and construction and just working working it out. Okay. And if you move it, you could, but you could also alternatively, you can move it further away. And in this case, you would still be able to produce a bright spot of uh, 40 centimeters. Let's have a look. So you have the same mirror, 20 centimeters, 20 centimeters. You move the, the, the point further away, the source further away. And now the, the ray of light, the rays of light, they converge. They converge like this. They cross over. And if you place a screen, they can still produce a spot of 40 centimeters. So you have two possible positions two possible positions so starting from s it goes like this and like this like this and like this so it's either so in the first case scenario it's 1.33 meters in case distance is 1.33 meters and in this case d is um 1.0 Doesn't make any sense. It can't be 0 0.14 or 0.3. Or uh, 0.92. Yeah, I think it's 0 0.92. But I won't I won't put the numbers just in case uh, I was wrong. I have a contradicting data here. Uh, but yes. It, the 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 important stuff is the rays of light that you that you have. Oh, mind link. Yes. So going back to that. Well, I mean, look, you need to find this distance. Let's call it, I don't know, x. You can see that uh, x plus l is equal to 2f plus l small, 2f plus l small, yeah? In the same distance, so s, s, uh, b, s, b can be expressed as small x plus large l, but it also can be expressed as 2f, which is this one, plus l small. And from here, you can express x equals 2f plus l minus l. OK. Um, we have, we have um, another question here. Let, let me go through well i mean it's it's a really difficult it's, it's a tough one uh i should have i should have prepared easy questions for 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 you today just to get you get you started and not bore you to death with uh with complicated with complicated uh maths but let's uh nevertheless let's try doing it so this is a lens now and uh this is the this is the object so this is the optical axis. This is the optical axis. I'll quickly go, skim through that. And we know that the ray of light going through the, going parallel to the beam, goes through the focal point. So we find this the second focal point. Here, it goes through the focal point. That's the first ray of light. The second ray of light traveling from the focal point through through the bug and comes out 
parallel to the optical axis. So we can find where the image, so the lens is not big enough. Let's just make the lens bigger. This is the lens. So a bug is crawling towards a convex lens at a speed of 0 0.2 centimeters per second. Find the speed of the image when the bug is f over 2 away from the lens. A is 3 centimeters and f is 6 centimeters. So the focal distance is 6 centimeters. Okay. So we can find where the image of the bug by continuing this ray, this first ray, mm -hmm. the first ray, the second ray. So where they intersect, that's the position of the image of the bug. Yeah. So this is the bug. And this is the image. image. Now, as the bug is crawling towards the lens, it is the light is always parallel. The light is always parallel to the axis. So it will always come out this way. That means that the image of the bug is crawling in this direction. So this is V0, and this is, let's call it V1. V1 is the image of the bug. Okay. The distance from the bug to the lens, let's call this distance um, D, O, distance from the object. This would be the distance from to the image, D, I, and this is the focal point. Because it's a virtual image, the thin lens formula is one over D, O, minus one over D, I, is equal to one over f. Oh, and it's a diverging lens. Oh, it's a converging lens, so it's one over f. That's fine. So the distance to the image, the distance to the image is equal to one over the distance to the image, is one the distance to the object minus one over f. And we can we can write this as f minus d zero over f d zero. In other words, d i can be written as f minus d o divided by f d o. Now v zero, the speed at which is moving, is the speed at which the distance d o is changing. In other words, v zero is the derivative of do dt. That looks weird, but it's the derivative. So basically it's do prime. Is the rate at which do is changing. That's the speed. Okay. And we can work out the derivative of di. Di is the derivative. And that's equal to the derivative of that. So it's use the quotient rule here. It's a it's a it's a division, so it's a quotient rule. So it's minus d zero prime multiplied by f d zero minus f minus d zero. Oh, sorry, that doesn't make sense. I forgot to flip it. It's f d zero divided by f minus d zero. Okay, so I, I, I find the derivative. So d i prime, so f d zero, so that's going to be f d zero prime multiplied by f minus d zero minus f d zero. I'm using the quotient rule multiplied by minus d0 prime. 
divided by f minus d0, d0 squared. And that's the horizontal speed of the image. <laughs> Sorry, I, uh, if you lost me, if I lost you, uh, I'm, I, I apologize. Uh, I'll just skim through this. I, I, I have to. I have to run, but um, I, I feel bad not finishing this question. So v one, we found the horizontal component of v one. This is the horizontal component. Horizontal component of v one. And, but we all know all these values. So d i prime is f. F is six. D prime. That's the speed. That's zero point two. And then six minus three, because d zero is three, is the distance is three minus the focal point is six times d zero, which is three and times uh, minus 0 0.2, because that's the speed. Yes, d0 prime is the velocity, which is 0 0.2, 0 0.2 meters per second. The focal point is six centimeters. The d0 is three centimeters, right? Divided by f minus d0, which is six minus three squared which is 0 0.8 centimeters per second. That's the horizontal component of V1. And now we notice one, one little thing. If we draw a triangle like this, and like this, and like this, Sorry, not this triangle. This triangle. You draw a triangle like this. This is A. And this is the focal distance, F. Therefore, focal distance, F. And this angle is theta. And this angle is the same as this angle. Therefore, we can see that V1 is equal, V1 times cos theta is the horizontal component. The horizontal component of V1, so V1x is V1x, but V1x is D1 di prime. In other words, v1 is equal to di prime divided by cos theta. And cos theta we can work out because we know that from this triangle that uh, cos theta is the adjacent, so mm -hmm. f divided by the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is f squared plus a squared. And uh, f is 6 divided by square root of 6 squared plus 3 squared, which is 45, which is 2 over root 5. You can plug that in. So that's equal to 0 0.8 divided by 2 over square root 5 which is approximately 0 0.9 centimeters per second. That's the speed at which the image is moving, right? So I hope that made at least a teeny bit of sense. Um, the next two webinars will be on maths, but do, do ask questions and uh, 
um i'm happy to i'm happy to answer it's um it's it's probably one of the hardest uh, assignments and so don't worry if you don't do everything just do as much as you can uh do 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 provide do give some feedback on how you found it okay all right so see you then uh see you next week uh next week is is david with maths with uh functions exciting stuff see you